What's up, everybody? Welcome back. In for another fun-filled weekend. Today's Saturday, so got the whole weekend to get a bunch of stuff done. And as you remember, throughout the week, I've just been slowly picking away at things, and uh, I was short on some steel and a couple bolts. Uh, I got those this morning, and we're going to go ahead and get started on that. So as you remember, I had um, this much done. So now we're going to finish the uh, finish this side right here, and uh, I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, maybe just show you kind of how I find some of the angles that you know to make everything kind of. Uh, you know fit all the lines to fit right up and uh, Doesn't really require any anything too major on angle wise, but um, I Couldn't even tell you what this angle is right here in degrees uh, all I know is that You know just kind of how to make them line up so and it's a relatively simple thing here you're, you're gonna kind of laugh whenever you see how easy it is, but uh, let's, let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so uh, basically now um, we have one side already completed and what we need to do is we need to make the up, you know, this upper piece right here. We need to make the same angle just like this one. So what we need to do is we're going, to, what I'm going to do to get a starting point is going to measure from right here to the tip of this one right here uh, it's in the very top of the screen right here uh, the, the top right of the screen you can see my finger right here but anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a measurement I'm just gonna butt the tape measure down here and it looks like we're about eight and three quarter or I'm sorry seven and three quarters to the top so I'm going to take that and transfer it over to here that's our seven and three quarters yep seven and three quarters okay so now our measurement from here to here and here to here should theoretically be the same. Then we'll take our angle finder or our angle whatever thing. I don't even know what this thing's called. It's bad that I don't know what it's called. I'm having a brain fart here. But anyway, we don't need to know the exact angle. We just need to, to copy it and place it over there. So now I'm lined up with that angle right there and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this and I'm going to line the top part of the ruler up this top part of the ruler with uh, my seven and three quarter line I'm gonna get that lined up I'm just gonna trace it so that's how I'm going to do that and then you just cut it. Okay, so now I have the uh, bracket bolted here onto the bottom of the transmission. And uh, I guess over to the passenger side here, I have it bolted up to where it's going, where it will be permanently mounted. And let's see if I get the camera right here. Okay, so now uh, I think you probably can see where I'm going with this. Uh, if, let's see, where did I put that? Uh, gotta grab the marker. So now what I'm going to do is 
is I'm going to hold this uh, piece of tubing here over the end of the frame and I'm going to butt it flat up against the, the channel and where it's going to be mounted permanently and then I just take the marker and I trace the angle nothing uh, nothing too complicated but the end result is usually pretty good and I guess you'll see it you know whenever I'm done and then you can see for yourself I think it works pretty good though I mean like even like this angle right here I mean it I just have a tack welded and but the the lines line up pretty well and uh, we're gonna go up and get this piece cut now as you notice it's a little bit a little bit longer on this side I can always trade you know trim that off as needed because it's just a straight cut but I, I wanted to leave a little bit extra in case I messed up this angle you know cutting this this angle right here and I wanted to have some extra just just in case I needed to move in a little further and recut it again in case I messed it up but usually uh, I get it the first try so all right then all we gotta do is just uh, pull this bracket off and And then go up the top and we'll get this this piece cut get it tacked on bring it back under and we'll see where we're at I know I'm gonna be blocking the view but it's okay I'm just cutting with this looks like circular saw for wood but nah it's for metal fast forward Oh well, I guess. Yeah, I mean. Oh, here, let me take the camera here, see if you can see it. But everything lines up. I mean, there's a little air gap right there, but. That angle lines up perfect. Okay, so this is the passenger side of the of the uh, frame rail. This is the passenger side frame rail, and it goes down and over and across. And so now I know what you're gonna say. Look at that gap between the frame rail. But that's kind of what I was shooting for because on this passenger side. It's already firm against the frame rail, as you can see. And then this rubber right here, uh, it gives a little bit. And so what I, I kind of want to like have a little bit of preload up on this rubber, you know, just so that it's actually supporting, it's kind of supporting the back of this transmission. So that'll work out pretty good because, I mean, like, I'm not really pushing that hard as you can see and I'm pretty much closing the gap up but anyway um, so that'll work out good because once I tighten it down and, and, and it'll push itself up against this frame here it'll add a little bit of support to the back which is kinda what I'm shooting for so it uh, kinda you know worked out perfect first try I don't know how but it did so we're just gonna roll with that all right, now uh, I'm going to, let's see how much is, uh, I'm, I'm just going to have to trim a little bit off of this edge right here, and then I need to build a, uh, one of, one of these right here, drill the holes, and then I'm going to go around and finish welding everything, and then we'll do a, a final install, just to make sure everything's good, and then we'll, uh, Paint it up. 
before I finish welding everything, um, just kind of make sure that everything kind of fits. Well, not kind of, make sure it actually fits. And we'll uh, just kind of get everything going to go ahead and tighten it like crank it all the way down because I don't want the uh, I don't want to break any of these tack welds but uh, everything everything lines up that's kind of what I wanted to check for and uh, we already know that this is good because both of these sides were tight I just don't want to tighten this side yet because I don't want anything to break but uh, I'd say it's pretty good and we're just gonna go through now later on and finish welding everything get it painted and while it's drying we can start messing with something else so that's uh that's good right there oh i just uh figured i'd i don't know if you'll be able to see it in the next camera angle but i just figured i'd let you know why everything looks so blue it's because of this welding screen that i have that go in front of the window and it just keeps any of the splatter and slag and all that from melting the window so that's where you see the blue light from i don't mind doing a little bit of tack welding here and there you know that with it up but when i'm doing just a bunch of welding like i'm going to do when i finish welding all this uh, that's that comes down so that's why everything looks a little blue agenda for today is uh, one that is going to be a little tough because I'm not too sure how I'm going to do it yet but anyway this is a cross this cross member right here it connects to the running boards here and then this little arm attaches to the frame up here well when I put this transmission in um, the, this cross member had to come out so um, as you can see it kind of hoops up in the middle here well what I'm probably going to do is luckily there's a nice convenient oh, nice convenient little bolt yeah, that thing was just hanging there a minute ago but anyway um, 
so what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to uh, just maybe cut right here before the bend because it looks like yeah maybe I'll cut right right where my my finger that's moving is and then I'll cut that I'll do that on both sides and I'll bolt them up to the running boards bolt it up to the frame right here and then I'll have to just build the middle piece to um, to meet up with the two outer ends that are already bolted on so that's probably what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to just going to cut it and then reconnect them I'm not too sure uh, how much support I can get just by bolting it here and here you might not even need the middle piece because in the back not too far from it is another one right here that runs all the way across and most of the time when you get in the car you're stepping right about here which is where this original one is so this front one which is right about here you don't really step right there too much so I might be able to get away with just that but I don't know that for sure until I do it so I'm gonna going to just cut right there and we'll go from there okay so as much as it hurt me to do it I cut both of those uh, by hurt me I meant uh, cutting something that old <laughs> that has made it this far it almost you know almost a hundred years and I just cut it but I cut it with love because we're showing this car some love by doing all this. So, yeah, just had to get that out of my system. Okay, so what we're looking at is the driver's side running board. I do not have the bracket hooked up on this side. I have the bracket attached to the passenger side. And the reason I'm over here first is I'm going to show you a comparison. So... Right now, I have one foot on the ground and I have one foot on this running board. Now I'm just going to slightly push down with my foot. And I don't know if you can see how much that is flexing like that. So I'm barely putting any pressure on it. I mean literally, I'm just I'm just pushing on it with my foot here and it's flexing that much. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come around and we're going to look at this side. I have the bracket bolted up on this side and I'm going to push down on it and there's very little movement and I'm actually going to stand on it and there is no movement going on. So I would feel safe. Let's see, see like that's that's all in the suspension. So I'm thinking that it's going to be more trouble to try and run this up and over the top or underneath and and for what it's worth, I mean, I don't believe it will compromise the, the strength of the frame because right in front of it you have the engine block holding it you have the, the engine holding it and right behind it you have this other cross member going across and then also I mean I don't know how much this is doing for support but um, the parking brake linkage is right there as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this and take it outside and trim it off a little nicer and I'm just gonna run with that because um, not only is this bar right attached right here but it's also bolted up here and it's bolted under here so it's it's got 
um, enough bolts in it and I'm trying to think of how to describe that basically this triangular pattern kind of acts um, in a way to where it won't allow anything it will actually try to twist the frame I think it would actually have to try to twist this frame rail and, and unlike I said honestly I I think most of the time when you get in the car you're gonna be stepping stepping in the back and uh, I don't I don't believe it's gonna be that much of a concern so that's what we're gonna do I just made the executive decision literally right now you just heard it so going to mark this cut it bolt the other side on mark it cut it and we're going to mount them for the final time if uh, anybody has any reason why I should not do it this way just let me know in the comments and uh, you know if you've run into this in the past and you've done it and you've had a problem with it just let me know uh, let me know what your thoughts are and uh, whether you think it's a good or a bad idea I'm, I'm up for suggestions so let's get to it. The nut strip. Okay, well, but anyway, I'm not gonna bore you with that part. Uh, I just need to put a new nut on this one. But anyway, we have both parts attached, and even with this one not even tight, I mean, everything's very, very firm now. So, um, I all I gotta do is do the driver side, and yeah. Wow, well, I wasn't planning on getting that done that fast. Hmm. What should I do now? Um, these parts to go for the support, the cross member, those are still drying. Uh, I might not, I might put those on late, late tonight. I don't know, but if not, uh, probably just throw them on tomorrow. I mean, it's a quick thing. It should be a quick thing. I don't want to jinx it. But maybe I'll put the master cylinder bracket on, and then I can finish tightening up all... I left these two bolts loose, and uh, so that I could put the bracket in there for the master cylinder. So maybe I'll go ahead and throw them on. So let's uh, let me just look around and make sure I didn't miss anything down here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's move on to that. 
Okay, so here we have the, comes with this bracket, and master cylinder, reservoirs, and the, well, I guess both reservoirs. Let me uh, see here, I believe it came with some instructions, just to make sure that, I don't know why there would be two, maybe, I don't know to read the instructions but anyway there's the kit and um, I believe the instructions are right here okay there's those so now if you see right here on these instructions it says shim washer spacers between Warford transmission and housing so, if you have a Warford transmission, like I do, uh, you'll have to remember that, because there's special instructions if using that. So, and it says, do not use shim washer, or looks like they put wayers with the standard Ford uh, ball cap. So, yeah. Well, uh, go ahead and uh, we'll get to that. So here's the final product. So we got the everything all tight and everything went on real nice. So that should add a little bit of support to the back of this car or back of that transmission there. And I feel a lot better with that on there. And so I bought two pieces of square tubing for this that were $10 a piece and then some uh, this this mount right here, which I believe that's from O'Reilly's, and I believe it was I think it was around eighteen bucks. And um, so between that and then some bolts, I mean, there's probably a couple bucks. So I, I have about like forty to forty five bucks in this thing, and I, I forget honestly how much the cross member kit that you can buy for this cost. But it's it's probably around three hundred dollars if if I remember right. But it may be more than that, honestly. But uh, not bad. Uh, a lot a lot cheaper this way, <laughs> and you have some fun doing it. But um, I have the master cylinder uh, all mounted, and I'm just uh, I just need to bench bleed it. And, well, I'm going to bench bleed it up in here because I didn't hook it up to the pedal yet so that I could do that. But the uh, hose that they gave me that goes from here to the uh, remote mount 
reservoir. It was too short. So I gotta go get a little bit longer hose. And then I can hook that up and uh, I'll go ahead and get that thing bench bled. And then that should be pretty close to done. So yeah, it is, we're slowly getting there though. Little by a bit, little by little. And uh, right now I'm I'm gonna mount the starter switch. That's the little uh, foot pedal thing. That that goes in the floor. So that's uh that's the next thing on the project here. I got the uh, turn signal uh, lever all mounted. And I think tomorrow I'm going to, what I had planned is maybe start the wiring and uh, get the disc brakes all bled. And then I need to mess with uh, these um, linkages right here that go between the parking brakes and the uh, lever. So I need to mess with those a little bit, but I think tomorrow for sure we will get the, uh, like I said, the brakes bled, get those done, start the wiring, and um, there's one other thing. Oh, speedometer. Yeah, I got a speedometer for this thing. So that'll be nice to have, uh, but yeah. And then I'm sure we'll find something along the way. You know, there's always something to do to this thing. But, uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, I got these mounted. I got the uh, uh, reservoir for the uh, master cylinder and the ignition coil. Which, I, I'm, I'm thinking this ignition coil might be bad. It's hard to believe, but I think it might be bad. Not sure yet, though. I gotta do a little diagnosing on that. But... Um, I'm, I need to go and get a hose that goes from here down to the master cylinder. The one that came in the kit is too short. I, I don't know why, but it is. So, yeah, everything, uh, thing is getting there. But, yeah, because I, um, I attempted to start it. But it's not getting any spark. And I, I know I had it wired right. I just had it temporarily wired off of a battery. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I had it. I mean, well, not pretty sure. I I know I had it wired right. So um, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit tomorrow. But anyway, the uh, that's about it. That's about it. I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go do other uh, things besides work in the garage. So, um, but anyway, we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's uh, Sunday. So we'll uh, have a good day out here. And uh, But anyway, hope you can join. And if you like it, don't forget, subscribe. Or like the video or something. Tell your friends if you like what you what you're watching here because this is going to be the I mean you see we're building it and then you're gonna ride across the country with me too so it'll be a good time uh, but anyway we'll uh, see everybody on the next video and everybody have a good one we'll see you